being on my own again really makes me feel the remoteness of this place and you know, the sheer enormity of what I've got to do because you know, Rick and I have just thrown everything at this and we haven't so much as had a glimpse of this killer fish. So in a way, I just feel as if I'm back where I started. I've just come full circle. It's back to a line in the water. I have got to know this river. I've heard the horror stories, seen the evidence for myself. I've worked out what the Seuss is, what it looks like and where it lives. The next step is to try and fish one out. I have at least got a much clearer idea of what I'm dealing with now, and, but it's still a needle in a haystack. And the monsoon is fast approaching. I can feel the air pressure building and you've got these clouds boiling up. And, you know, if the rains come, I could be stranded here. And that, you know, really focuses the, the mind. The brown water that sent Rick home is getting worse, and the water level is beginning to rise. I've just got to get cracking. I've got to get a bait in the water in front of something. And uh, it hasn't happened yet. There is still time, but the, uh, God, the pressure, the pressure is not just the atmospheric pressure, the pressure is building. But this rising water has got the goonch biting and I'm quickly into some fish. That is a goonch. It's not a very big one. Each catch gives me data on these fish, like how big their mouth is in relation to body size. Information that will help me calculate how big a man-eating goonch really needs to be. Look at the length of the tentacles on the tail. Look at that. Can you imagine that scaled up to about three times the length and grabbing you by the leg and dragging you under? It's in the fast water. Something very powerful on you. Try and relax and keep a bit calm. Gaining a tiny bit of line. Right, the water is flowing this way now. I've got it into the water that's flowing this way. I have been fishing long enough that I have developed a kind of sixth sense. I know when I have a big fish on, and this is a big it's fish. Gone. It's gone, you know, it's gone. There's a lot of line out and some very strong water the other side of it, so... It's... The big problem here is that if it gets out of this pool, I am never going to be able to pull this fish back up against this yeah, current. Very touch and go, very touch and go. And then it does exactly what I didn't want it to do. Either this fish is gone, or I've got to do something drastic. I'm going to have to go for a swim. I don't know what I'm thinking, apart from being desperate not to lose this fish, regardless of my own safety. Wait till it comes up. Wait, 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 wait. Now, now, now. That is a serious size goonch. That is a man-sized animal. That is as big as a person. It is bigger than a lot of people around here. That is a big fish. They do exist, the goonch do exist. Six foot of muscle behind that mouth. And those teeth are just like shark teeth pointing back. If that got hold of you, there'd be no getting away. When I was diving with Rick, and we were seeing these, uh, these beasts under the water, and they just look so otherworldly. Is it a hallucination? Do these things really exist? And yes, the goonch does exist. Just the absolute perfect predator. Huge mouth on there. Huge, huge, huge mouth. And uh, if anything just comes down within range of that mouth, it's too late. 
I mean, big as this fish is, um, the fish that is taking people would be bigger than this. I mean, it wouldn't actually need to be more than a couple of feet longer, but that would really give it a bit, bit more weight. I mean, it would probably weigh twice as much as this. And, you know, just the thought of that is quite terrifying. Okay, uh, is it off the ground? No, yes. Okay, 166, 161 pounds. <laughs>